Hey, my name is Terry White, and in this episode, I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time. I teach it in my classes, I've recorded it in previous videos, but it was always part of other videos or other topics. So, since I get this question so often, I'm going to make it its own topic, its own video, so I can just point people to it. Just go watch this one clip, and it will answer the question. And that is, how do I move my photos from one hard drive to another if they're being managed by Lightroom? In other words, I don't want to break anything, I don't want Lightroom to lose connection, I don't want to lose my edits, I don't want to lose anything, so how do I do it? I'm going to show you two ways to do it. The way that most people probably are doing it now, which is not the best way, but I'll show you how it works, and I'm going to show you the better way. Let's do it that way. So we're going to call it the better way. So with that, let's jump right in and take a look at both methods of how to move your photos to another drive, to another storage. So I'm here on my MacBook Pro, and on my MacBook Pro, I use uh, Light, I have my Lightroom catalogs. As a matter of fact, I sync them with Dropbox, so that way they're on all my computers. And But my photos are only like a work in progress. In other words, the photos that I'm currently doing in the shoot, they stay on my MacBook Pro's internal hard drive, until I'm done with that shoot, and then I move them to another drive. Because I don't you know, I don't have enough room to keep every photo I ever use on the uh, laptop's hard drive. So at some point, they've got to be moved. Now here are the methods. I have two folders that we're going to move. The first one is this uh, folder with 21 images in it uh, called Star. And I'm going to do it the way that most people do it the wrong way. So I'm going to, first of all, show me where that folder is on my operating system. And let's go to it in the Finder. All right, there's the star folder in the operating system. And what people will then do is say, oh, well, I probably can't be in Lightroom. Let me quit out of Lightroom. And we'll skip that till next week. And then they'll go ahead and they'll just simply find, uh, here I am on a, um, on a, uh, a network volume, my server. Uh, or NAS, if you want to call it that. I'm just going to go ahead and move these images over to this drive. So I just held down the command key. So it moves those images from one drive to the other instead of copying. So as you can see, it's moving 20 more items to go. And in just about a minute here, again, it is moving that over the network. So it takes a couple extra minutes for that to happen. But once it's done, those images will no longer be in the location where... Lightroom thought they were. All right, just a couple seconds left, and boom, they've been moved. That's it. They're no longer in the place where they used to be. So now the next time I go and launch Lightroom, and I have done something outside of Lightroom, I moved them to another location, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get this exclamation point, which is a bad thing. It says the photo is missing. And for each photo in that folder that you highlight, it says it's missing. Because you did it outside of Lightroom, Lightroom has no idea what you're doing behind its back or behind the scenes. So it says, hey, you know, those photos aren't in the star folder on your um, second volume of your MacBook Pro. I don't know where they are anymore. You're going to have to help me. So this method is the way I used to do it because I kind of knew what I was doing. But I got a better method that saves me uh, steps. So let's finish this one. Now, not only are the photos missing, but they're missing in such a way that I can't do anything until I reconnect them because I did not build smart previews either. So if I were to try and take one of these images into the, into the develop module, it's going to say the file can't be found and therefore it's going to lock me out of all editing whatsoever. I can't do a thing. So let's go in and let's fix the problem. We're going to go ahead and click the exclamation point on the first image. Notice it's star 2, number 29. And it's going to say, hey, I can't find star 2, number 29, DNG. Where is it? It gives you the ability to click locate. So I'm going to go ahead and locate it. I know it's out on my uh, file server here. There we are. And it's in my server folder. And it's in the archive photos folder. And there it is. That's where I just moved it to. And it's looking for number 29. There's number 29. Now notice this important checkbox. It says, I can also find nearby missing photos. Do you want me to do that? Now this, of course, check by default. Yes, go ahead and do that for me. 
Now, this will also kind of throw you off is that once it does that, once it reconnects those photos, let's go down here in the, there we are. We're in the server volume now and it knows that they're in the archived photos area and they're in that star photo. Okay, so now it's done that and the photo is no longer missing. It knows where it is now and at this point, Sometimes, depending on how you did that, it may basically leave you with an empty folder in the old location. So you can delete the empty folder and you can go in and just point to the new folder or just you know click on the new folder and you'll see where they are. But in this case, uh, it didn't do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on. And what I'm gonna do is notice they now say original photo. So that means I can go in and work on these pictures. But one more thing, let's select all, just in case we ever, are disconnected from the server, which when I take my laptop out of my home, I will be disconnected from the server. So if I ever wanna work on those photos, I'm gonna go up to my library menu, come down to previews, and I'm gonna build smart previews. Now what that tells it to do is it builds much smaller preview files than the actual original raw files, and it puts them in the same location as the, origin, as the um, catalog. So therefore, even though the images are on the server, when I take my laptop away somewhere else, I'll have the catalog, which is on the laptop's hard drive, and I'll have the smart previews, which is on the laptop's hard drive, and I can then keep working. I don't have to worry about those images are missing, and therefore, I can't be in the develop module. And I'll prove that point in just a moment. Let's let the build smart previews finish. And this, by the way, can work behind the scenes uh, or in the background, I should say. So if you want to continue working, go to another folder, do other stuff, you don't have to wait for the Build Smart Previews to finish. Uh, you can't. That is a process that, that will happen in the background and you can let it work in the background while you go do other things with other photos or even with the same photos that are selected. It doesn't matter. All right, and that task is now completed. And those images have been built. Now, let's quit Lightroom one more time. We don't have to quit, but I just want to prove the point. And I'm going to unmount the server. I'm going to disconnect from it. There it is. It's just gone off the desktop. Now it's gone. Well, watch what happens. When I launch Lightroom again, let's say I took my laptop away from my home or office, and now I'm no longer connected to the server anymore. Well, now it says something else when I select those photos. Here, let's select just one. It says that it's a smart preview. In other words, the original photo's not here, it's on a drive somewhere else, but I still have that smart preview to work with. So if I were to go into the develop module, I go in the develop module and I have full access to um, my develop controls. I can go in and adjust the um, contrast, I can make it a black and white, I can do whatever I want right here and when I reconnect, when I get back home and plug in the server or connect to the server again, it will apply those changes um, to the actual original files or to the metadata of the original files, depending on how you have Lightroom set up. So that will happen no matter what. You can work safely offline or away from your original files. And when you come back and reconnect, it'll apply those changes to the high res raw files. All right, so that was the first method and again, that's not the one I usually recommend for people that want to move their files from one drive to the other. It does work. It's multiple steps. It can, in some cases, be a little faster, some cases not, depending on what your connection is. But it did work. I could copy them behind the scenes and behind Lightroom's back and then reconnect them once I got back to Lightroom. But why don't we just let Lightroom do all the work for us? So in this case, I've now got an external drive. And this external drive has not been used in this copy of Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead, or this, this catalog I should say, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. It's a Thunderbolt hard drive, Thunderbolt slash USB 3. And when I plug it in, Lightroom won't do a thing. It won't notice it, it won't do anything, it won't pop up in Lightroom because there are no photos on it that are being managed with Lightroom. But let's go take a look at it. Let's go out here. And that hard drive is made up of three volumes. There is a hard drive backup, there's a 250 gig, and there's an expen or expanse backup. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the 250 gig volume. 
I'm going to make a new, actually, you know what? We'll do it all in Lightroom, like I said. Let's do it. So let's go back. And now that we're here in Lightroom, I'm going to go ahead and say in the folders area, this is how I'm going to tell Lightroom that that drive exists. Lightroom has to see at least one folder on that drive. So let's go ahead and say we want to add a folder. And it's going to ask us where. Where do you want to add that folder? Now I could point to the external drive. I can say that I want to create a new folder called Archived Photos on that drive. And the minute I create that folder and click Choose, it is now here in Lightroom. It's empty, but it's here. Lightroom now knows about that drive. So at that point, I can take my Ariana 2 folder, which has 12 images in it, 12 raw files, and instead of quitting Lightroom or going behind Lightroom's back and moving stuff behind the scenes, I'll let Lightroom do it. I'll just simply drag the one folder from my internal drive to that external drive in that folder, and look, Lightroom's doing the move for me, and it's done. So now, it knows where those images are. I don't have to reconnect anything. I don't have to do any extra steps. Done. That's it. And because I had built a smart preview for those, those are now showing up here. So even if I go out to the finder and I disconnect that drive, let's eject them all. When I come back to Lightroom, Lightroom still knows where they were. <laughs> and it says there's a smart preview so you can continue editing until you plug that drive back in. Once you plug that drive back in, you'll be able to just simply, or Lightroom will just simply see that it's connected again all your images will be there, no more missing or exclamation points, and you can just keep working. So I hope you've learned in this video how to manage your photos better, how to move them from one drive to another. You saw, saw two methods, I prefer the second one. And basically just how to keep things together and not be afraid that Lightroom's gonna somehow screw up if, if images or something's moved. Now, again, if you continue to work behind Lightroom's back, then yeah, there is more chance of something going wrong and things needing to be reconnected manually or in some cases maybe even being lost. So that's why I prefer to go ahead and let Lightroom do the managing. So that's it. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode and we'll catch you on the next one.